FlossTube, my name's Emma from Emma X Stitching over on Instagram and this is FlossTube number one. Um, I've been on Instagram a few months and decided it was finally about time to make the leap over to FlossTube. Um, everyone is mentioning him and I wasn't going to um, just because I'm sick of hearing his name but um, Darcy Cameron over on FlossTube, Stitchman Darcy on Instagram uh, finally pushed me <laughs> into starting this channel. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but he gave me some gentle-ish encouragement. Um, and before I even start filming this, I have over 100 subscribers, which terrifies me. Um, but yeah, let's give it a go and see what happens. Um, so I thought I'd start with um, a little introduction of where I came from, um, who I am, why I started stitching um, and then we'll probably do a little bit of a whip parade and see where we get to. Um, so yeah, I've watched Rocio, um, Kokohama Stitchery's video on starting a floss tube channel. Um, that was the first place I went when I decided to officially start. Um, and then yesterday I also messaged Sean from Craftivating Creations um, for a little bit of advice. I told her I feel like everyone messages her for advice, but I think it's just because she's so calm and professional and her videos are brilliant. Um, and she was so lovely, she gave me some really nice advice. Um, so yeah, we'll get going. Um, so as I say, my name is Emma. I live in a little seaside town in the northwest of England called Southport. I live with my partner Jo um, and our two children. We have a daughter, Iris, she is nearly three, and our little boy, Rory, he is about five months, I think, now. Um, yeah, uh, they're adorable, such little characters. Um, I am currently on maternity leave, still from work at the minute, but uh, when I get back to normal, I work in a GP surgery, um, which I love. Um, it's a lovely job, stressful, but really lovely. Um, and I have such a lovely team of people that I work with. Um, if I am not working or stitching, I uh, you can usually find me reading, I love my reading, I love my books, um, or eating. Is that a hobby? Um, that's the thing that me and my partner like doing together, we love going out to eat. So as soon as the restaurants open again, um, we will be the first in line, I think. Um, we're still in lockdown over in England at the minute, but hopefully next week, I think, sees the easing of restrictions. So fingers crossed this will be it this time and we can slowly start getting back to normal. Um, oh, I should really mention I have no pets. I feel like that's like a, a thing that you have to have pets if you do floss tube. I feel like I'm a bit out of the norm by not having any pets. But yes, it's just humans in this household, no animals, I'm afraid. Um, and I'm really sorry, I've just realized that I can't look at the camera. I keep looking at myself. So if that's annoying, <laughs> I'm really sorry. And I'll try my best to keep looking at the camera um, rather than at myself. Um, I'm really not used to being on camera. So um, this is a little bit terrifying for me. Um, so I started cross stitching when I was around five years old, I think. Um, my mum is amazing at all crafts. Um, she has been crafting as long as I can remember um, and also her mum, my nana, um, she's sadly no longer with us but she too was um, brilliant at needlework. Um, so I feel like I always had needlework around me. Um, my mum, as I say, I think taught me when I was around five um, and I remember stitching on and off ever since really. I remember I had this, um, I think they were called Get Set kits um, and you used to get all sorts of different things. I remember having like one for mosaics and um, Egyptian pottery and all sorts but there was a cross stitching or embroidery one of those that I had um, and I remember doing all sorts of projects from that kit. Um, which really got me going. And then I remember every time we went on holiday as a child, I always had um, a project with me. Um, so yeah, I, as I say, I've been stitching on and off really. 
um, since a child. I don't remember a time where I've never not stitched for a really sustained period. Um, but yeah, I remember even like when I was, I think maybe 10 or 11, I remember going on holiday with my cousin and um, who's a year or two older than me. And I remember helping her cross stitch. Um, and I remember my Nana showing my projects to her friends and they were always obsessed by the backs, which I could never understand because my backs have always been, still are a complete mess. Um, but that doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, um, I feel like I've really got back into properly stitching like regularly, um, kind of since lockdown. Um, so about a year ago now, um, I had, I'll show you my finishes maybe next video, um, some previous finishes, but I had a project that I was working on for absolutely years. Um, it was one actually that my mum started. Um, it was a photograph that we got changed into a cross stitch pattern of my grandparents garden they were really keen gardeners and their garden was absolutely beautiful um so yeah my mum started it did about 20 stitches and then it got put in a cupboard um and i think it was probably about seven years ago maybe a bit longer now um i found it in this cupboard and thought this needs stitching, I'm gonna pick it up and carry on with it. So um, that's what I did. And it was huge, it was I think like a 25 page pattern which now actually doesn't seem that big at all. Um, but at the time it was huge, it was a paper pattern, I had no idea what pattern keeper was um, and I had no idea that there was this community of cross stitchers that I could go to. Um, so I just plodded on with it and I had to get bored of it and put it back down. And I also had it on this like huge scroll frame. Um, I didn't know Q snaps were a thing. Um, I just assumed that, well, my mum had it on this scroll frame, so I need to carry on with it on this scroll frame. Um, so it was huge, so uncomfortable. I can never get comfortable stitching on it. Um, so yeah, I'd put it down, pick it back up. And eventually I think in well, I probably when lockdown started, I thought, do you know what, this needs finishing, I'm just gonna do it. Um, and I think it was around June when I finally completed it. Um, so I'll get that back from my mum um, and show you maybe next video if I do another one. We'll see how this one goes first. Um, so yeah, that was how I got back into cross stitching. And when I was stitching that, um, I kept getting these adverts on Facebook for, um, it was actually for Caterpillar cross stitch um of their kits um and things so i thought do you know what i'm gonna have a look what this is all about so i went over to their website and i was like oh there's some really lovely modern cross stitch patterns um so i think i bought a few of those um and then i started watching um sally from caterpillar cross stitch she was doing um like some stitch with me's on friday nights throughout lockdown so I started watching some of those and then I was like, oh, floss tube, what is this? <laughs> I'd never heard of it before. Um, I think someone had asked her on one of her lives which floss tubers she watched and I was like, what on earth is a floss tuber? So I started searching and I came across so many wonderful people and I feel like every day since um, I've been subscribing and watching various people and I just love it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I started stitching, how I've continued my journey. Um, and once I finished my huge garden piece, um, my eyes were just open to all these different um, projects and patterns. And I basically just went wild choosing stuff. Um, I think like, I've only got about 10 whips, I think. Um, but the amount of patterns I have to start um, in my stash is a little bit embarrassing, so. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get to that in another video as well. Um, but yeah, I think we'll um, crack on with my whips. I'm really sorry I keep looking down as well. I will get better at this and I'm still not looking at the camera, but we will get better at this. Um, so yeah, I think I'll get straight into my whips um, and show you some of the things I've got going. I'm gonna put my coffee down because otherwise I'm gonna end up spilling it. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, I'm not doing these in any particular order. Um, I'm just gonna grab 
uh, and show you. Um, I'll tell you, I think I've got uh, notes of when I started them, um, so I can tell you that. And these are actually all pretty new. Um, as I say, um, I was working on this garden piece and uh, even after that, the following projects that I did, I was like, I could only have one project at a time. I didn't know. I didn't even realise, I didn't even think that I could have like um, multiple projects on the go. As I say, it's only when I started watching Floss Tube and this whole new world was opened up to me um, that I just started starting everything. Um, so, first project, um, let's start with a Haid. Now I say Haid, um, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit with my two Haids that I've got on the go um, because they're quick stitches and minis. Um, I'm not quite brave enough to do one of the huge ones yet, but maybe we'll get there one day. Um, so this is, um, I'm going to see if I can show you what it should look like, if I can get my tablet to work. It's the oldest tablet, um, but it sort of works with Pattern Keeper just about, so we'll crack on with it. Um, so my first aid is um, called Quick Stitch Tranquil Tulip, um, it's by Hannah Disney. Or Hannah Lynn, um, she seems to go under two different names. I'm not sure which one um, is the right one. Um, but yeah, this is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And it will look like, sorry if there's any glare, this when it's done. And here is where I am. Do you know what? I'm going to put some paper behind it. So here you go. Um, so this is done on 20 count Ada, uh, just white Ada, and I am about 37.34% done with that. So I started this on the 2nd of January this year, um, and I love it. I think the colours are beautiful. Um, should I keep this holding up while I talk about it? Maybe? I don't know. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's beautiful. So I've done all the black, I've colour completed a few of the colours um, and now I'm just going to fill in as I come to things I think. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful, I love it. Um, I really love bright colourful pieces. Um, so yeah, that's my first Haid. I'm just going to chuck projects around and probably have a right mess to clean up when I've finished. Um, so my next Haid, um, I mentioned Darcy earlier. Um, but basically, he had a load of patterns, um, some of them he started and some of them he just got in his stash sat there. Um, everyone will already watch Darcy, as I say, everyone talks about him. Um, so go over and watch him if for some reason you've stumbled across this video and you don't know who he is. I'll link him in the um, description below if I can figure out how to do that. Um, but yeah, so I messaged him when I saw one particular pattern that he had, um, Mini Sunflower Cottage, and he was saying that he didn't know um, when he was going to start it, he doesn't have a daughter to stitch it for, um, he didn't know why he would stitch it, but it looks like so much fun. So I had this pattern as one of my many patterns sat in my stash that I really wanted to start. Um, so I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna message him and see if he wants to do it as a stitch along. Um, so he eventually replied to say he was really excited and yes, he would love to do that as a stitch along. Um, so here was what it should look like when it's done. There you go. Um, so it is the most fun pattern. Um, it is so cute, so colourful. Um, I love it. Um, so here's where I'm up to now. I've left this one in the Q-snap. There you go. So I am a middle starter, which seems very rare for um, Hade patterns. In fact, most cross stitching actually. Um, I thought it would be the norm to start in the middle, but apparently top left seems to be where most people go for. Um, so yeah, this is a mini Sunflower Cottage, <clears throat> sorry, by uh, Donna Gelsinger, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I am doing this on 25 count Swigart, easy count Lugana. Um, in fact, actually, I should really say as well, until I started watching Floss Tube, 
as far as I was concerned, white 14, 16 count Ada was it. That's what you stitched on. Um, once I started watching Floss Tube, I was opened up to this whole new world of um, different counts, different fabrics, um, stitching on linen, what? Um, different colours of fabric. Some people stitch on some beautiful fabrics. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm only just being opened up to this whole new world. Um, and same with threads. I think I only ever stitch with DMC. Um, I've not been brave enough to try any of these beautiful silks that I see, but maybe one day I'll have to have a little go. Um, so yeah, so this is um, my mini sunflower cottage. Um, please join in with us um, with our stitch along. Um, people are flying with it. Um, people like um, Cindy, the George Stitcher, um, she is like over 20% done. In fact, she may be finished by the time I put this video up. Um, and then there's um, a few others on Instagram and on Floss Tube. Um, Crafty Emily, she's doing really well with it. Um, there is the Stitchy Penguin. Um, she's got a few Floss Tube videos up. Um, we've got X Stitching Mama 87. I think she's on Instagram. Um, she's actually just posted her first floss tube video um i think she's nicole stitches again i'll link these people below but yeah there's tons of people um starting it with us and who else have we got Alyssa jones uh aj stitches on instagram and sammy liz as well um so yeah i'm really i'm really surprised actually how many people are joining us um but i absolutely love it i'm loving seeing everyone's progress um so yeah so that is uh mini sunflower cottage and 4.08% done with this one um oh and I should say as well Jemima the rocking stitcher she said she was going to join us and start this if I filmed the floss tube video so Jemima please go and get your things and join us um yeah so please it's never too late to start it um join anytime there's no time scale on it as I say some people are absolutely flying with it um but me not so much i don't get much stitchy time each day as i say i have two young children um my son does not like sleep at all um so yeah i spend most of my time running up and down stairs of an evening um as darcy will know he's over in canada and i'm frequently messaging him at all hours of the night um over here obviously it's a bit more of a reasonable hour <laughs> for him um but yeah, I, I just don't really do sleep or much stitching time, but we'll do our best. Um, so that is my two haids that I have on the go at the minute. I've got tons more that I really want to start sometime soon. Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, right, my next one is called, we'll do Disney Princesses. Um, this is by um, Happy Sloth Patterns. I think it's Happy Sloth Patterns. I should have bought a bigger piece of paper. So here's what we have so far, if you can see. Yeah, I don't iron my pieces either. I should maybe do that next time I film. Um, so this is, um, as I say, Disney Princesses. Um, I am about 22.52% done on this one so far. And um, there's gonna be 12 princesses in total. Uh, I've done, have I finished that one? Oh, nearly, nearly finished the 10th one. Um, so yeah, this is done on 16 count white Ada. Back to my roots, back to my original. Um, I started this one on the 28th of January. Um, this is actually um, the third in this sort of series, I guess, that I've done. Um, my partner is a huge Star Trek fan. I don't know anything about Star Trek. But um, I did two patterns for him in this um, style, um, which I might show you in my next video. Um, I say um a lot. I'm sorry, I've never noticed that before. <laughs> I'll try my best to stop. So this is, as I say, the third one I've done in this. Um, these will all be coloured in when I'm done. In fact, let's see if we can get a picture for you. Wrong button. Um, here we go. So this is what it'll look like when it's done. So it's just like an outline. Um, 
no faces, which creeps my mum out a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is what it'll look like when it's done. And I love this just because it's easy. I tend to do this like while my son is napping. Um, it's just an easy thing that I can just grab and stitch on. Um, and especially once I've done all the outlines, I can just go back and fill in the colours. Um, but yeah, that's that one. I love it. It's really easy. Um, and it looks kind of cool, I think. Right, next one is I started the Modern Folk Embroidery Sal um, Stitch Along um, for this year. Uh, by the way, Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery, the king of floss tube, in my opinion, um, he's already subscribing, which terrifies me. I feel like I could have a thousand subscribers, but the fact that Jacob is watching, well, maybe not watching, subscribes, <laughs> terrifies me so much. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is my start on this. I'm gonna keep this folded up actually because it's a huge piece of fabric. I've only done January, I'm a little bit behind. So this is um, January's section of the Stitch Along. It's called Fruits of Plenty. And this, this is where I branched out with my fabric. This is a 32 count Lucan by Zweigart. Um, I'm stitching this two over two, full cross. And I started this on the 15th of January this year. And I'm doing this in the colors that he sort of, oh, sorry, there's a thread across that. I did this, I'm doing this in the colors that he stitched his, um, mock-up with. Um, I've seen so many beautiful uh, colour conversions of this. I kind of wish I'd like thought about it a little bit more before I started and maybe done something different but um, I still think it's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to get going more on this. It's just such a commitment each month. Um, I really need to pick this up and get back going on it. Um, as I say, I just love seeing everyone's um, versions of it. And people stitch so quick. <laughs> it scares me. Slow down, people. <laughs> um, so, oh, I, do I have a pattern of this when it's done? Let's see. Hmm. No. I'll see if I can insert one. I'm a bit of a technophobe, so I'm not sure how any editing skills will go on this. Um, so I'll try my best and put a picture in here, maybe. Hopefully, you'll be seeing something now. Um, so yeah, that's my Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along. Uh, next one, this is again me branching out with my fabric traces. This is uh, Winter Wonderland by, uh, his, no, hang on, Historic Stick Muster. I don't know how you pronounce that, really sorry. Um, and this is where I'm up to on this. Ooh. I really need to iron these things. Um, so this is on the same fabric as the Modern Folk embroidery one. It's the 32 count Lucan. Again, stitched two over two full cross. Um, and this is actually part of a stitch along hosted by Shiloh over at Stitch MD. Um, was this, a, I think she started this in December, I think. Um, so I stitched on it for a while throughout December. I started it on the 1st of December, I started this. Um, and I really need to pick it back up. Um, but it's a bit festive and I think I'll probably leave it until closer to the festive period this year. But it's beautiful, I love it. I love this style of um, stitching. And this is done in the called for colours. Um, this is actually on the Silk stitching app. Um, which is really good. It's a little bit like Pattern Keeper, um, but it tells you like how long you've spent stitching on it and things, which I don't actually have written down. I should have done that before I started. Um, I'm using my phone to film, so I can't check. Um, but yeah, I'm 11.5% done. Um, and I'm using the called for colors for this. I don't really venture far from called for colors. Maybe I should start doing that soon. Um, yeah, so that's my Winter Wonderland stitch along. Um, next piece is a birth sampler. Um, this is for my brother and my sister-in-law. Um, they're due their baby in July. Um, if they happen to stumble across this video, just stop watching for a few minutes. Um, 
I don't think they will. I actually have a picture of what this one should look like anyway. Um, so here's what it should look like when it's done. Um, so this is called 123 Count With Me and it's by the historical sampler company. And I just love their patterns. I think they're so beautiful. I think they're, um, I really like this sort of like old school style of sampler. I think it's really beautiful. Um, so that's what it should look like. And here is where we, oh, that's not the right way around. Here's where we are so far. So I've got all the boxes outlined. And um, this is obviously where the name and everything goes, which I need to wait till baby is born before I can fill that in. Um, but we've done numbers one and two, they're finished. And I've nearly finished number five. I've just got one little duck there to finish. Um, so yeah, I really need to get moving with that one to get that finished. But it's really nice to stitch on. I really like stitching all the little motifs. Um, that's really good fun. Um, Oh, that was on 16 count natural, I think it is. That came as a full kit. So I'm just using everything that came with the kit for that one. Um, and as I say, I really like it. I think it's really cute. I need someone else to have a baby sometime so I can stitch some more of their samplers. I think they're beautiful. Um, next up is a chessboard that I'm stitching. Um, this is by Doodlecraft Designs. I have a print out this one as well. So this is actually predominantly black work. Um, it's got cross stitching as the border of the chessboard and then a few of the little bugs in the border have cross stitching, um, but a lot of it is black work, um, which I find really nice. I, I usually hate back stitching, but I think this is really fun to do. I really like it. Um, so this is what it'll look like when it's done. And this again, I got as a full kit. Um, I'm not too far along with this one. Let me hold it behind some paper for you. I don't know which way up this is meant to go, but we'll work it out. So this is where I'm up to so far. Um, so we've just got a few of the outlines done and I started filling in one of the squares there. I actually changed this colour. Um, it's charted in like a... Oh, check me changing colours. I think this is the only one I've done it in. Um, this is um, this was charted in like a, um, it's like a variegated and it was like green and pinks. I can't remember what the number is. Is it on here? No. Um, it was charted in like this variegated colour and I just wasn't sure on the pink bit of it. Um, so I decided just to pick a solid green um, to stitch this in. And I'm really liking how it's coming up. Um, I started this on the unboxing day on the 26th of December um, and this is done on 20 count I think I think it's about 20 count um, so I got Ada just in white um, and I did tell myself I was gonna outline like a box a day just to keep on top of it but that's obviously not happened um, but yeah, I will pick that back up soon because I really like it. Again, doing the, bo the um, borders of the chessboard is just nice sort of therapeutic, relax relaxing stitching. So we will get back to that at some point soon. Um, the next whip I have, oh, whip, work in progress. Did I say that already? Um, yeah, whips are works in progress. Um, so yeah, the next one I have is the Sense and Sensibility Stitch Along Sal Stitch Along um, by the Stitching Book Club, who is also as, I think her name is Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on Instagram. Um, I wasn't going to do this. I kept seeing all the Stitch Alongs for um, her book club that she does and I wasn't going to do it. And I just kept getting, seeing all these beautiful patterns that people were stitching. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna have to jump in. Um, I love reading, but I've never really read many classics. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to get stuck in, um, read the books that they were stitching and make some really nice patterns. So I have been reading Sense and Sensibility, listening to it, I should say. Um, quite enjoying it, actually. Um, 
I'm finding it easier to listen to. I find classics quite hard to read. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, so yeah, this is where I'm up to. I've nearly finished part one. Ooh, let me put the kind of paper. And I actually branched out of my fabric trace on this one. So this is where we're up to. I say I've nearly finished part one. And this is done on um, Ada, 16 Count Ada by Claire Brown. I can't remember what her exact Instagram name is. I'll link it down below. Um, but yeah, Claire Brown. Um, and it's beautiful. It's I think it's called A Glimpse of Blue Sky, I think it's called. Um, and it's this beautiful white and blue sort of cloudy pattern. Um, this was actually charted in a blue fabric um, and she had two different colourways, one for the blue fabric and one for the white fabric. Um, and because this is, I thought, I, I, I thought I'd stitch from Stash and I'd ordered from Claire Brown these, this mystery um, pack of Ada um, where she just sends five random Ada patterns to you. Um, and I've just got them sat in my sash and I don't know what I wanted to do with them. So I thought this actually might be perfect. Um, but obviously with it being blue and white, I wasn't really sure which um, colourway to go with. So I've gone with the colourway for white fabric. Um, which I, but I think you can still see everything pretty nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think it looks beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And I think I'm joined up to do the next two in the um, series as well, which I think is Little Women and is it The Great Gatsby? I'm not sure. We'll have to check. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to those. I think her patterns are beautiful. Um, do I know? I don't have a picture of what that one's going to look like. Obviously, she's only released two parts at the minute. Um, I'll see if I can insert one, maybe if I can find one of where we're up to so far. Um, but yeah. I really like that one it's really nice stitching um now my final two i kind of wasn't really going to show you because um they're barely started but um why not why not show you the full picture of where we're at with my stitching um sorry i'm sat on the floor i'm getting really uncomfortable <laughs> um so the first one is um the steady thread black work botanical black work year long stitch along um, I'm a fan of a stitch along, can you tell? Um, so last year I did the Peppermint Purple Year of Black Work, um, which I really enjoyed. I'll show you that again in my next video if I show you some finishes. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I was going to do her one for this year as well, but I just thought, mm, I'll see if there's something a little bit different um, that I can do. So I found the Steady Thread one. And this is more of a botanical theme. So each week she does a different flower um, and you can pick different layouts. So there's like a garden layout, there's a hexagon one, there's vases, or there's just a square one. And I thought I'd just stick with the square pattern, I think, which is what my, it's similar-ish to what my um, peppermint purple one was. And this is as far as I've got one whole square <laughs> and that's it i'm not even filled in um but i'm hoping maybe when i go back to work i might take this as like my lunchtime stitching um so she releases a new pattern every week so i'm hoping even if i can just get the outlines quickly done on my lunch breaks in work and i've also chosen to do the drop shadow option i don't know if you can see that um rather than just the basic squares so yeah we'll pick that one back up soon and get going with it I've got a year, right? <laughs> I think we're on about week 11 or 12 already. Um, but yeah, we'll get there with it. Um, some people are doing some really beautiful things, different colours. I've not even decided what colours I want to do mine in yet. Um, I'm thinking I might go for the colours to match the flowers, if I can find similar. Um, a few people have done that and it looks beautiful. Um, and I know a few people did that in her one that she did last year as well. Um, and they just look stunning. So I think we might do that. Um, and then my final whip that I have, which I started last night, and mainly because I wanted to get up to 10 whips, <laughs> um, is the Stitch Rovia Emma Congdon um, Colours of Summer. So I've seen a lot of people over on Instagram doing these little swatches, and I think they just look really cool. I think they look really nice 
sort of therapeutic mindless stitching as well because a lot of them are just plain blocks and um, again I'll try and put a picture in of what it's meant to look like when it's done and she's got three seasons out so far so she's done summer winter and spring and I'm assuming there's going to be a autumn one coming um but yeah these look really fun so I said this to Darcy last night and he laughed at how much I'd done <laughs> there's no point showing you really I have an outline of one square <laughs> so this I think is the square for apples and pears so um, hopefully you'll have seen what it's meant to look like but it's basically swatches of different things and then underneath it'll have what each thing is um, so yeah that's my tiny start on that one um, and that is on I think I'm doing these on 18 count white Ada um, and the squares are actually bigger than I thought. Um, I know I said to someone over on Instagram the other day who'd finished theirs, I thought they were just like little 10 by 10 squares and they'd be quite easy to stitch, but they're actually a lot bigger than I thought. I think they're about 18 by 18. Um, so yeah, a bit more stitching than I anticipated, but hey ho. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all of my whips. And I'm really surprised how long I've been talking for. <laughs> I thought this would either be, um, three minutes and I just like blurt things out really quickly and that'll be it or I'd be rambling on for hours and hours never upload this um who knows I might not upload this still we'll wait and see um but yeah those are my uh works in progresses and a little bit about me um I hope you enjoyed this um subscribe if you're not already um like this video that's what people say isn't it like and subscribe <laughs> um and hopefully i'll come back at some point and show you some finishes um and some updates um i'm probably gonna aim for maybe once a month um if i can do it more frequently i will um but as i say with two young children and then i'm also gonna start going back to work next month i think in about six weeks i'll be back at work um so yeah uh we'll see we'll see how i get on um so i hope you enjoyed i hope this is okay i apologize for not looking at the camera and for all my ums throughout um again i'll don't know how to edit yet we'll find out we'll see if i can put anything in um again sean from craft Bait and creations very kindly offered um to help if i need it <laughs> So I'm sure she'll be getting a message later, um, begging for her help on what on earth I do next. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, if you've got this far. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye.